So we approach our chosen parking bay in a dead straight line. That way we end up about an open door width away from the car that's parked in front of our bay. As we come up, we check our mirror, we indicate towards the curb and we apply the brakes. By the time the front of our car reaches the back of the other car, we should be doing walking pace only and that will allow us to be precise about where we stop. You should stop when the back of your car lines up with the back of the car that's parked in front of your chosen parking bay. What that means is that when the backs of the cars line up, generally speaking, the external mirrors will also line up. But if you park next to a much smaller car or a much bigger car, you just need to make a slight adjustment so that the backs do line up. Once we've stopped completely, we need to put the car into reverse and turn the indicator off. Now in some jurisdictions, you may need to leave your indicator on. In Perth, Western Australia, you turn the indicator off, but you must check your own local jurisdiction. Now the next step is optional, but it does give you some orientation in terms of what 45 degrees is. So what we do is we look out the driver's window and we pick an object that lines up with our external mirror. And that should give us an accurate 45 degree angle. Now exactly where on your mirror you line up will depend upon your seated position. So if you have the seat way forward, it's gonna be the edge of the mirror that's closest to the car. If you have the seat way back, it's probably gonna be the edge that's away from the car. But most people will be somewhere around about the middle of your mirror. But it, again, it does depend on your car. Some mirrors are positioned in slightly different places on, on different models of cars. Once you've done that preparation and you're ready to move, you must check all around. So you must check over your right shoulder in your central mirror. And if you've got a camera, glance there at the same time and over your left shoulder. You also need to look straight ahead to see if any cars are coming towards you because you cannot commence your maneuver if there are cars coming towards you. You must wait for them to pass because the nose of your car will potentially swing into their path and cause them to have to stop. Now we're just about to move. What you have to remember in some jurisdictions is that you're not allowed to turn the steering wheel more than half a turn if the car's not moving. And this is all to do with vehicle management and tire wear and all that sort of stuff. In a lot of jurisdictions, you are allowed to steer the car when it's not moving. And that simplifies the maneuver because you can get into the position where you need to turn, stop the car and then turn fully. In Perth, Western Australia, the car must be moving during the entire manoeuvre when you're steering. You can stop from time to time during the manoeuvre, but you cannot steer more than half a turn while the car is stationary. If you do, you'll lose a point on your driving test under the category of vehicle management. And if you're in the habit of doing static steering or dry steering all the way through your test, that could be enough to cause you to fail. As I said, it's only applicable in certain jurisdictions, so you must check. So once we get moving, we keep on looking all around and we get the car to 45 degrees. You'll be at 45 degrees when you're looking straight out across your, your steering wheel at the object that you nominated as being the 45 degree point. If you haven't used that step, then you can just wing it and work out when you think you're at 45 degrees. Once you get to 45 degrees, with the car still moving just a little bit, you straighten your wheels up completely and that will normally be about one and a half turns of the steering wheel. And you continue back in a straight line on that 45 degree angle until your rear wheel reaches the edge of the parking space. Now this is your rear wheel that's away from the curb. Now the alternative way of working it out is to just get your passenger side mirror adjacent to the rear corner of the car that's parked in front of you. That's not as precise, but sometimes that's the only way you can do it if you don't have things to help you, such as blind spot mirrors that show you where your back tire is on the road. Once you get to that designated point, you turn the wheel away from the curb fully and the nose of the car will swing into the bay. You continue into the bay until the car is completely straight and at that point you straighten your front wheels up by turning the steering wheel about one and a half turns. All the way through this manoeuvre you'll be having regular checks over your right shoulder, left shoulder, in your central mirror, in your camera, in your side mirrors and just generally looking around. When you're far enough back in the bay, you stop. Now, when you're trying to determine whether you're central in the bay or not, while you're still in reverse, you can have a quick glance at your camera and just, just look around and you'll be able to work out whether you need to move forwards a bit. So here's the manoeuvre again at normal speed. So here comes the car down the road in a dead straight line, slowing down, indicator on and stopping when the mirrors line up and coincidentally the backs line up. Into reverse, indicator off, moving into the bay, looking around regularly, getting the back wheel to the edge of the bay, and then swinging the nose of the car in. 
doesn't take long, it's just a series of steps that you have to tie together. Just going back into the bay there, far enough back, sometimes there'll be a car behind you there, just stopping and coming forward. Pretty easy. And here's the ground level shot. Here comes the car, dead straight down the road, indicator on, pulling up next to the car in front, put it into reverse, turn the indicator off, the reversing lights come on, and looking around, swinging the car into the bay, getting to 45 degrees, straightening up, continuing on that angle until the rear wheel reaches the edge of the parking bay, and then turning the wheel away from the curb fully to swing the car in. Normally there'd be a car behind you, that's the very reason you'd be doing the reverse parallel park. So you've got to watch for the car behind, make sure you don't get too close, just stop there and then centralise. Again, pretty straightforward.